there's a Zigbee one and there's a Z-Wave one. And it's like, well, they're both Zs. Is that going to mean they're all going to work? Or uh, do I get a Z-Hub? I don't see the Z-Hub. So speaking of that, with the brain, the coordinator, the hub, the host, whatever you want to call it, there's yeah. several different ones. Some of them do require the cloud to just even turn on a light bulb, even though they are Zigbee. Well, mm -hmm. ones I prefer are going to be fully local where you do that opting in, where say, you, say your internet's right. not working. Uh, your ISP is down for a couple of days. Uh, mm -hmm. Just something, stuff like that happens sometimes. Yep. And I still want to be able to turn on my lights. You still want to be able to open your closet door and everything come on. And so <sighs> that's the awesome thing about Zigbee. And one we like to use is Home Assistant that you can mm -hmm. basically put it on a Raspberry Pi. And I know some of you may be hungry, but no, it's not. It's actually a little one single board <laughs> computer. And it's really just put a micro SD card in it. You put it in a closet or mm -hmm. next to your modem, plug in your Zigbee, stick to it and rock and roll. And I mean, some of that's right. not that difficult to do, especially now in, you know, this 2021, now they've made things very simple on that. Right. Yeah. You've got a few options as far as the coordinator. Like you said, you could go with a hub. Some of those do require the cloud, as you mentioned. Um, so Zigbee itself, as we've talked about before, those communications are always local, but certain operations on the hub, like automations, like you mentioned, might require somebody else's servers to process, which right. almost seems ironic because you have this local protocol Zigbee, but then to do things with it, you need to talk to someone else's server. I'm not a huge fan of that. I, like you, prefer everything to be local. Um, so some hubs, like Philips Hue, uh, when you use the app, that is actually local. Oh, you have okay. a, yeah, and you can opt into the cloud, like you said, to then control the devices outside your network. Um, the problem with some hubs is that you are limited to a certain subset of Zigbee devices. Ah, yes. Um, so Philips Hue, you can pair Philips Hue bulbs and then some, I think they're called Friends of Hue devices. Ah, mm-hmm. So you wouldn't necessarily you wouldn't be able to take a temperature sensor and pair it to your Hue Hub. So um, your other option, if you want to pair a wide variety of Zigbee devices, you could look for a hub that has more compatibility. But what I prefer is to have a Zigbee stick, like you mentioned, where yeah. you actually are plugging that in, you know, a Raspberry Pi or really any machine, mm -hmm. any computer, and then you run software that can then handle the Zigbee messages and pairing all the devices and everything like that. Yeah, and we're probably gonna cover some of that, especially in some of the later videos. This is kind of the, the primer for, I know a lot of people don't really know, hey, what devices to start with and all the things of trying to do things in the smart home. Now, it mm -hmm. seems there's always some other competition out there. And I know I've seen some of the stuff with Z-Wave and they have, you yeah. know, some s smart bulbs and smart switches. And sometimes I, they've seen, I go in the store and there's, there's a Zigbee one and there's a Z-Wave one. And it's like, well, they're both Zs. Is that going to mean they're all going to work? Or I, do I get a Z-Hub? <laughs> I don't see the Z-Hub. So it's just like. Right. <laughs> I have some Z-Wave devices. Honestly, I'm mostly Zigbee. I have about 40 Zigbee devices set up right now. Oh, okay. Um, and three z-wave oh wow <laughs> those protocols are very similar they're both mesh networks they're both meant for primarily low power devices that don't really send a lot of data um now z-wave tends to be more expensive than zigbee and there's a few factors at play here one of them is z-wave devices are often more configurable than zigbee devices mm -hmm. so most, for example, Zigbee motion sensors, you get one sensitivity and one cooldown. So, like, it'll report when motion is detected, but it won't send a, a motion cleared message until a certain period of time of no motion, 60 ah, seconds, yeah. 120. Um, with some Zigbee motion sensors, you can configure those things, but 
Z-Wave generally is known for being more configurable. So you could maybe change that cooldown. You could change the sensitivity. If it has a light sensor built in, you could even configure that. Um, so that's definitely a contributing factor. So one thing I've noticed when, you know, looking on Amazon or whatever, find your different smart devices, it always seems like the, like, as you said, the Z-Wave devices, they're sometimes cost significantly more. The, as you can see, IT has a motion sensor for around $10 and then it's Zigbee, but then you go on and look at some of the other devices that are Z-Wave and their motion sensor, there may be 30 to $40. And some of the issues I found with that was that Zigbee is all going to be the same, same frequency and the same where, especially battery power devices, because a temperature sensor is just that, where if you make, right. as a manufacturer makes that temperature sensor, you could sell it to people in many different countries where that frequency is approved, which is the same frequency as Wi-Fi. So I, I don't know offhand where there's not any Wi-Fi in countries on that frequency. So now with Z-Wave, yeah, there's, a, what was like, I, I want to say it was like two or three different frequencies. So I, I could definitely yep. see the differences of the economy of scale where it's just cheaper to make more of one device and that instead of you had to make three or four. Another potential contributor would be that Z-Wave, generally speaking, those devices have better intercompatibility. So when you buy a Z-Wave device, it's pretty much guaranteed to work with whatever other devices you have on your Z-Wave network. Ah, uh, yep. With Zigbee, generally anything you get is going to work fine, but sometimes manufacturers will deviate from the Zigbee specifications. Mm -hmm. You know, they might have a temperature sensor that speaks just a little differently than other temperature sensors do. So then you have to work around that and kind of figure out how it's communicating and then make adjustments accordingly. As far as I know, you don't really see that with Z-Wave. So that could be another part of the price difference. Now, I have been hearing with the Zigbee 3.0 update that... Things have gotten a lot better with the Zigbee Alliance, trying to make sure that everybody is kind of speaking that same language. That way, everybody kind of ties together. There's some good changes in Zigbee 3.0. Um, they're definitely taking steps in the right direction. It's becoming more of a kind of complete standard. I mean, Zigbee is a standard, and right. even before 3.0 it was. But yeah, some of the changes they made, it definitely looks promising compared to the older versions of Zigbee. So with a lot of the hubs or the coordinators, and we're talking about how you can opt into different cloud services. And one of those very important for many cloud services, being able to use voice assistants, such as the Amazon mm -hmm. Alexa or the Google homes and being able to set different scenes and turn lights off or turn fans off and on. Yeah. It's definitely all of those allow you to opt in, even say, you know, from smart things to home assistant to all the different ones we've talked about. So it definitely brings things all together and just makes it easy to control your smart home, you know, without having to get up from the couch. Didn't see that coming, did you? Well, we didn't either. And guess what? There's no outro in this one. Well, wait. This is an outro. Well, y'all take care. Who's sandcastling? Who's sandcastling? That's mine. It's yours? Yeah, don't step on it. It's super perfect. Oh. All right. You a pro wave rider? It's a big one coming. You ready for it? You ready for it? You ready for it? Kick. Go. Go. Man, maybe this one will do it. There's a big one coming. Oh, this one's gonna do it. Go!